Andy, this is a brief overview of the motorhome's um, control systems. We have two control panels above the habitation door. The one on the left turns on the 12 volt system and gives you information as to the condition of batteries and the condition of the or the state of the water tanks in terms of how much water there's in them. The con two controls on the right are the heating and the hot water. Okay, so let's start with the control panel on the left. First of all, switch it on. It doesn't matter whether you're hooked up to the mains or not. I am, but uh, this turns on the 12 volt system. Now you can see it says there, le le uh, leisure battery good. If I use a little drop down arrow, it'll cycle through batteries, main supply on, fresh water 25% full, waste tank empty, external temperature, tells you what the current, uh, the ba battery's drawing at present. Um, that's forget that one forget that one and set the clock um, so um, to use anything within the motor home this control panel has to be turned on you've got several other little buttons here the battery symbol there if you turn that on that then is using 12 volts from the vehicle battery not not a good idea unless it's an emergency because it's liable to run your vehicle battery flat but if you want to charge the vehicle battery, when it's plugged in, select that switch. So now I'm plugged in, I'm charging the vehicle battery. The little tap symbol there is for the pump. So when you use anything to do with the water system, that must be turned on. And you will hear it when it pressurises, you'll hear it thump, thumping away. Uh, once it's pressurised, it, it, it'll quiet down. But it's, it's not, no, nothing wrong with the fact you can hear the pump. Okay. The heating on the gas fire is a sim simple procedure to turn on. Uh, you've got two knobs. No the knob on the right is the um, ignition knob and the, the, uh, the amount of gas you're using. And then the knob on the left is purely and simply the blown air fan uh, and the speed for that that distributes the air, the hot air around the van. So to turn it on, just turn the knob and you'll hear it clicking. That's the automatic igniter. Press down and hold. You might not have heard that, but she's fired up. Let go, honey, and that's boosted on. You can see if it's lit. I might not be able to get the angle for you with the phone, but there's a little port there that you can look through and see a flame. Let's just light it again. Just give it a second. There you go. It's probably a little bit of air in it because it's not been on. And then the um, the dial the dial on the left. That's the speed of the fan, and this is turning it on. It can be manual to the left, automatic to the right. Automatic. If you leave it on there, it'll keep shutting itself off when the temperature's up to up to power or up to up to speed, if you like. Turn it to the left. Look. You should be able to hear that. Now the uh, fire is distribu distributing. Hot air through these ducts here around the van. And that's as simple as that. Let's uh, deal with the heating within the van, at, the van to start with. Now, the, the van can be heated via electric or gas, and the heat comes from the same source as the, the, uh, the fire. Now, I'll show you the fire now. The, the front of it is off because, as I've told you, we're putting a new fan in it. So that's the gas and the electric fire. To control it on electric, it's a knob on the right, but you must be plugged into the 230 volt supply to work this, otherwise you can only use gas. It's off at the moment, you can see the um, symbol there. It can be 500, 1000 or 2000 watts. Waste of time on 500, if you hardly feel any heat at all. You want it on uh, 2000 watts if you want any any real heat but remember electric is nowhere near as good as gas to heat the van um, the uh, the gas the, the gas element of the fire I'll, I'll show you when we've put the uh, the cover back on it's just a simple matter of pressing a knob and igniting it the screen sorry the knob on the left is water heating to heat the water on gas and all we do is turn this 
for the flame symbol, a green light will come in, but I'll just watch this for a minute because it's interesting and it's useful for you later. Now what's happened after a few seconds, a little red warning light has come on. That's because I haven't taken the flue cover off. This is the boiler flue cover. You just pull from the button, pull it off. If this is still in, in position, the boiler won't light. It'll fault like I've just shown you. Good idea with this. When you take this off, just leave it on the pass on the driver's seat so you don't forget to put it back on when you go. Okay, so you must take this off to use the uh, the heat or hot water on gas. Now, remember two things you need to know. When you're heating the hot water, You've got to make sure, obviously, there's, a water, there's fresh water in the tank, but more importantly, you've got to make sure there's water in the boiler. Now, the way to do that is to put the pump on, go to any tap, we're using the uh, kitchen tap, turn, turn it on, there you can hear the pump kick in. If you're not sure which way hot is, just do it both ways, turn it both ways. So, so I've got a continuous flow there, and that setting, I've turned it that way, I've got a continuous flow there. What I'm looking for is a continuous flow of water when the hot, hot setting is turned on. That means that the, um, the boiler is full. Now when you first fill the boiler, like you've drained it down for instance after winter, you will get air spluttering out there. It'll be quite alarming to start with, but just let it just let it go until it clears the air from the from the pipes. That will happen. So once there is a free continuous flow of water from any, any uh, hot water tap, it's safe to turn the boiler on. Obviously, you don't want to put the boiler on with nothing inside it. OK. Now we come to heating the water on electric. Now I'm, I'm at the uh, cooker now, the bottom of the cooker. If you flip the bottom cupboard door down you'll see under here two sockets one is a plug socket obviously um, and we've got the one left of it is ultra store that has to be turned on to heat the water on the electric so all you do is just flick that switch down to heat the water on electric it's as simple as that good idea to leave that off when you're not uh, intending to heat the water now we come to the fridge it's what we call a three-way fridge it will work on 230 volts, gas, or we call it, they call it battery, but it's not really battery. It's um, working off the vehicle alternator, but only when it's running. And that's to keep the fridge cool whilst you, uh, whilst you uh, reach your destination. And it's a very simple operation. You've got a top, top separate uh, freezer box. Just turn it on, this switch here, just press that. It's automatic, so it'll automatically uh, select the um, the fuel source if you like it's gone straight to electric because that's its preferred preferred um, uh, fuel source but you can change that if you want if the engine was turned on now we unplugged it and turned the engine on it would automatically go to the the battery uh, operation side of it but if you wanted to change what it what it's put on you can do that manually by pressing that button that's the battery symbol Gone to electric. Look, it won't. It won't obviously work on electric. But go to gas. It won't. It won't gas. It's turned on. Okay, so just just turn that on, and it'll select its automatic fuel source, or you can decide if you want gas instead of electric. The button on the right just determines the temperature. Look, I always keep that on full. Very simple operation. Turn it off layer. Okay, now the, you can see the these doors aren't aren't closed fully. There's a little there's a little um, plastic lever here that folds away. That's so that the fridge can be left with an airflow when you're not using it, so it doesn't smell. Now, obviously, when you don't use the fridge for a length of time, if you close it, it it will smell. So, uh, obviously, when the fridge is on, it doesn't matter but uh, get into the habit of putting those on, okay? The toilet's uh, an electric flush, but the water needs to be turned, sorry, the water pump needs to be turned on to use it. And all you do to, uh, to I'll try and do this one on, uh, to use it is press the blue button. And 
and there she's pumping there look okay it'll pump as long as you keep your finger on the blue button if you look inside the bowl there and then underneath there's a grey sliding lever it might not show that on there but that's opening and closing the access to the cassette below now when you remove the cassette you must have this closed if you don't you won't be able to pull the cassette out from the locker so if you go to the locker you're trying to pull the cassette out and it's it's not moving don't yank it come back inside and close this 